Hello and welcome to my December reading wrap up. I read 11 books in December so it was a real nice end to the year. A little bit less than I normally read partially because I read Anna Karenina which took up a good chunk of time but also just the holidays were so brutal like they just felt more brutal this year like they just took up more time they <laughs> took more energy. I went out of town like two different times and it was just a lot. So a little bit smaller of a month. It's still a very good month and I read a lot of wonderful books this month so let's get into it. The first book that I read in December finally was Homegoing by Yag Yassi. I apologize for my demon cats. They're probably going to be like this all day. This is a historical fiction novel about two half-sisters and their descendants. Essentially the first two chapters are about each sister and their life and how their lives diverge. One stays in Africa, one lives in Africa and continues her life there, and one is sold into slavery in America. And then each successive chapter follows a different generation as it alternates through their descendants up until the present day. I gave this four stars. This has a lot of hype on booktube everywhere. I feel like I've heard about this book so many times and I understand why. Like it's a really good book. It's so well written. Her writing in this is beautiful. Like I really would like to read more from her. She has a very poetic style. It's one of those books that like you could open to any page and there would be some beautiful quotable line on that page. It's just lovely to read like she's very very skilled as a writer just like her her language and her word choice so like for sure want to read more from her just for that and story-wise it was really enjoyable and really interesting she very obviously did a lot of research because this book takes place over hundreds of years as we follow this family as they like kind of start in the same place and then just completely diverge on their life paths. I thought it was really really well done and like really interesting but I didn't love it quite as much as I wanted to. Like I really wanted to fall in love with this book and I struggled a lot with the short chapters. It's not a very long book. It's only about 300 pages and there are 16 different chapters that follow a different person each. So so we really don't get that much time with any of these characters and it felt like every time I was finally starting to like really get into a character and their story and who they are and like get really really invested the chapter would end and we would just skip to like a different person in a different place doing something else and like it would take me a minute to adjust and I just I never felt like I was really falling in love with their stories the way that I wanted to. Like you really only get on average I think what like 20 pages a chapter and it's just that's not much time like that's not much time for me to sit here and like get into all these different stories and I would have enjoyed this more had it been longer. I think this was a book that for me really needed to be much longer. Like you can only cover so much in such a short time and I think it fell a little bit short for me because of that. I also felt like I struggled a little bit with a sense of purposelessness in this book kind of like I love the first chapter I love the first chapter so much it was so powerful and so meaningful and just immediately engaged me with the story but then it felt like for the rest of it apart from the last two chapters which were also wonderful I just felt like I was always asking why like why are we following these people like what do these things mean like why do I care and it was just like it always had that sense of like it needed something a little more like the first chapter had something a little more and the last chapters had something more but for so much of the middle I was just kind of left with like it needed something else it needed something more to draw it together and I really can't tell you what it just it was just like a little bit short for me but it was still four stars it was still wonderful it's still one I would highly recommend if you like generational stories, if you like historical fiction. It's absolutely wonderful and I do think it it lives up to the hype and everything that everyone says about it. Then I read Deep Creek by Pam Houston, Finding Hope in the High Country, which I gave five stars. This is one of my favorite books of the year, if not my favorite book of the year. This is a collection of essays or 
a memoir. It's really a collection of essays, but it, you can read it together because all the essays kind of mesh really well together. So I kind of just read it all at once and couldn't differentiate between the essays very much. About a woman who bought a ranch in Colorado. And it's she's she's not a rancher, she's not a farmer. She just kind of bought it because she fell in love with the property and made it her life for several decades. And she's also a writer. Um, so she she's writing about her experience. This is not Pam Houston's first book. She actually bought the ranch with her payment from her first book which I must read now. But this is just like a collection of essays about her life on the ranch and her life in general. And she talks a lot about her childhood and she was abused very horribly by her parents. And she talks about that and she talks about how much this ranch has done for her. And she tells like funny stories of life on the ranch and she tells sad stories of life on the ranch. And she really like delves into the history and also her own history and kind of how all of these things come together and like how meaningful this is for her. Thank you for your presence, Blaine. And it's just like a really wonderful book. Like I love her writing style. It flows so well. It hits me so hard in all of the right spots. And it just like was so powerful to read. And I loved her stories and her voice. Like she, from this book, cause I don't know anything about her, obviously. But from this book, she just seems like such a wonderful person. She had one essay that was mainly about a babysitter in her life who like practically raised her and like was essentially the one person she had who taught her kindness from childhood and made sure that she was loved and supported like even with her abusive parents like because they were such a negative influence on her life. She wrote about this very positive influence on her life. And she wrote with such love and care for that woman that it was absolutely stunning and I cried. But she also tied that essay in with her current life as an adult and how she feels like she constantly gets so lucky in situations where like she runs into people who like could take advantage of her and she's in situations where it could be dangerous. But she always finds someone who is willing to help and who is willing to be genuine and kind and it was just like it was like the energy that she puts out into the world is just like wonderful like she seems like the absolute loveliest kindest person and she seems so thoughtful and genuine like again I am basing this solely on this book and like how she comes across she could be a huge awful liar I don't know but it was wonderful and it was like it made me so happy like that essay made me cry from just like joy you know like it was just like such a hopeful wonderful piece and then she has other pieces in here that are really sad and really dark and she talks about like animals being butchered on her property like without her consent like animals who were like her pets basically and she talks about like the abuse she underwent at the hands of her father and her mother and she talks about her relationships with them and like how she's evolved as a person and then she tells like funny stories about her miniature donkeys who are like awful little creatures but she loves them and like it's it's wonder like everything about this just hit me so perfectly and I absolutely fell in love and I think what struck me in this was that for all the sadness and like all the trauma that she went through and the negative things she discusses this is such a hopeful book like she seems like such an optimist like someone who can just look at the world and see the good that can be done and the good that is being done and it was wonderful like this is one that I would highly recommend it made me so happy like it made me so sad but it also made me so happy and I think with this book I have discovered a new favorite writer so I would highly recommend this if you like kind of nature writing and tied in with memoir especially because it, it was just really really wonderful for me. <laughs> then I listened to Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay which is my second that I read from Gay. I read her memoir Hunger and this was definitely a lot less traumatic than Hunger. <laughs> I don't know that I enjoyed it quite as much but I still gave it four stars. This is a collection of essays that discuss feminism and race and social issues and like uh, Roxane Gay's a writer and an activist and is she a professor? I think yes she was a professor. She has a PhD. She's 
brilliant. Like, that is the, my main takeaway from, like, reading all of her books is that she is just absolutely, like, one of the most intelligent people that I think I've ever read from. Like, she just, the way she thinks about topics and the way she discusses topics is just so insightful. And it's like, I'm not ever surprised by her intelligence. It's just like reading this, like every essay was just so smart and so worthwhile. And she has so much to say and she says it so well. And it's just like, I really can't overstate how necessary this book is or how wonderful it is. And like, it's a really great piece on feminism, but it's like not just solely about feminism and feminist topics because like feminist topics are so broad and wide-ranging because like there is an aspect to feminism in like every part of life you know like just as there is an aspect to race in every part of life and she's really good at writing through that lens and it was just fantastically done. A lot of the essays are really funny she has a great sense of humor some of them were very sad because she talks about the trauma in her life the racism she's experienced the sexual assault she experienced as well as her eating disorder not as much of that as was in Hunger, but it's it's still present. And she just talks about a lot of wonderful things in her life, a lot of terrible things in her life, a lot of both wonderful and terrible things in the world. I really, really enjoyed it. The only part that really lost me was she talks about, she has a whole section of it. I think it was different essays, but I was listening via audiobook, so it was a little bit hard to differentiate. But she had a section where she talked about media and like different types of media and she would have like a bit where she talked about like Tyler Perry and she just discussed like race and sex in his work and like she had a couple of different like movies and plays and books and I did struggle with that a little bit just because some of them I hadn't read or watched you know it's like I could follow along when she was talking about Tyler Perry because like I know Tyler Perry I'm familiar with his work but she talked about like a couple of books or like essays or plays or something that I just hadn't heard of before and it was really hard to like follow along with her discussion of that media because like I don't I'm not familiar with that media so like this might as well be gibberish to me but I would highly recommend this collection it's the slightest bit out of date because she did write this like I want to say 10 years ago or something but it's one of those pieces that I think is really good as an intro to feminism for people who are looking for a place to start but also for people who just are already aware of feminism because it's so nuanced and so interesting but she writes with such clarity that I think it's really easy to learn from her so would highly highly recommend this book. Then I read or at least I finished <laughs> Flash Fiction 72 Very Short Stories edited by James Thomas, Denise Thomas, and Tom Hazuka. Um, I had been reading this for like two months at this point. It took me a while to get through. It's a super quick read, but it is a collection of flash fiction. So there are 72 stories in here in like 215 pages. They're all, I think, about two pages long. I think that would be the average. Um, they originally conceived of this book to write so that each story would be like on a on a page. So like you could just open it and the whole story would be like this. So like it would just end there so you wouldn't have to turn the page but then I think they decided that wasn't that wasn't great actually her whole story is there yeah like that is the entire story <laughs> so they're all super short and I just like read a few at a time and it took me a while to get through I gave this three stars I really wanted to love it I like flash fiction quite a bit I love I love reading it I love writing it it's just like some to have such like a short piece of literature be so filled with emotion and power just like really hits me like I love that but unfortunately I just didn't get along with most of the essays in here or not essays stories um they were fine like I I wouldn't say many of them were bad like there were a couple I disliked and there were a couple that I really really enjoyed but most of them were just kind of like fine like they were okay stories I will probably never think of them again and I really wanted to fall in love with more than I did. So it was a fine collection. If you really like flash fiction, it might be a good place to go. But this was published in the 90s and it felt like so many of the writing styles were that like 90s literary fiction, like very kind of generic. And I just 
they didn't get along with it. And again, with a few exceptions, there are a few authors that I added books on my TBR because I was like, that was a wonderful short story. Let me let me read something more from you. So it wasn't like a total loss or anything. I just it was an okay book and I was really looking for something great. And then my other short book of, of the month was Bo Jackson Playing the Games by Ellen Emerson White. This is a middle grade children's biography that was written in the late 80s, early 90s. I forget when it was published. But Ellen Emerson White wrote a few of these. She's my favorite author, so I've been slowly trying to go through all of her books and read them. Um, this is my third or my fourth of these little, little biographies, and they're fine. I don't rate them because, like, they're 30 years old. They're very outdated. They're not written for me. They're written for a child in 1990, you know? So it's hard to sit here and be like, well, it didn't really cover a whole lot of his career, and it's really written down for, like, a very young audience, and it's, like, it's supposed to be. It is odd to read these after the fact. I think that's my main takeaway, because they're really written in, like, the middle of their career, so there's a lot of, like, he's gonna go on to do great things, or he's gonna go on to do X, Y, Z, and then, like, you Google him, and, like, he did not go on to do great things. His career ended very shortly after, <laughs> so it's just kind of, like, a little depressing, but it's very interesting. I don't know. I don't really need to know much about Bo Jackson, but it, it was a fun little kids read. And then I read The Silent Patient by Alex Nicolaides. Um, this is a thriller about a woman who murders her husband and then does not speak. And then she is hospitalized in a psychiatric facility because she's found, I don't know, not guilty via reason of insanity or incompetent to Sandra. I don't know. She's basically determined that she shouldn't be in prison. <laughs> she needs psychiatric help and she's been there for years. And then this therapist I think, counselor of some kind, decides he's gonna be the one to get through to her. And the story goes from there. It's not great. I gave it two stars. I don't understand the hype for this book. Everyone loves it. And I'm sitting here like, I hate almost everything about this book. It was very unpleasant. I was having a wonderful few months of reading. And then I read this and was like, bad books do exist. <laughs> I've just been lucky. This was unpleasant. I wrote a very lengthy review on Goodreads, and I don't know how much I care to go into it here, but I'll hit on a few main points. Number one, the main character was super annoying. I hated him. And, like, not that I hated him as a person, but I hated reading from him because he was annoying and I didn't want to sit here in his head. I found it irritating. And I, I, can, I can get down with really unlikable characters, but not an annoying one that makes me want to be far away from him. I was also very annoyed by the silence of, I think her name was Alicia. The whole premise of the book is that she is silent, you know? It's the silent patient, that she has no voice. And that would have been an interesting narrative structure to just like rely on this very silent protagonist kind of, because it's, it's really about her, even though the main character is the counselor. I don't remember his name either. And that would have been interesting, except that she does have a voice throughout the whole book. She has a diary that, like, we keep getting snapshots and, like, little snippets of her diary throughout this book. So it's like, she does have a voice. And they took away, like, the one interesting part of the narrative of, like, this woman is silent. And it's like, no, she's, like, literally not silent. We're reading pages and pages from her perspective. And I found that very annoying and useless. And, like, why would you, like, take away that very important element that is kind of like the whole premise of the book like I didn't get it um other little things that annoyed me it was there were so many little plot holes like she has this diary that she has somehow snuck into this psychiatric facility like she has gone from her home and being arrested to prison to the psych hospital and I'm like how did she somehow sneak in a diary that she wrote before all of this happened because it very explicitly says she didn't like break this at the hospital like she she continued it it is very much intended to be something that she wrote before so i'm like how did she get this into the hospital and then like there were a lot of like little things like that they were just like that's not how that works like how did that happen that's not possible 
and then like the mental health representation is just terrible like you can read other people's reviews but like really go into depth on that and discuss it and I just don't have the energy or the desire to go in depth here but it's really terrible and like this dude apparently has a background in mental health I'm like how like that's not how any of this works and it was just unpleasant like the best thing I can say about this is that it was a super quick read I was reading like 100 pages in 45 minutes but it was just like not great um so yeah there was that I, st I can still hate books that's that's the moral of the story here so at least I know I haven't gone completely soft and then I very finally finished the Kate Daniel series by Alana Andrews with Magic Triumphs which was book number 10 the final book I gave this three stars I just I really really enjoyed the Kate Daniel series when I started it. I started it in October. I read a bunch of the books. I was having a great time. They were mostly like four star reads for me. It's this urban fantasy series about a woman who has like magical powers and is a mercenary in like a future Atlanta in which Atlanta Georgia in which magic has returned and they're dealing with like magic coming in waves. Technology still works sometimes a little bit but it's unreliable but magic is also unreliable it's really cool and the main character is a mercenary who has some magic herself and kind of just like gets stuff done <laughs> um she kind of it's kind of like an episodic like kind of supernatural vibe where she essentially solves a mystery like every book so it's kind of like there's this investigative element there's this like magical fantasy element and then there's like a heavy romance element because she falls in love with the shapeshifter king um thing um alpha that's the word the alpha um but I have really really enjoyed the series overall it was fantastic but I think with book number eight they ended a very large arc and kind of went in a slightly different direction with like a couple of different elements and at that point I just don't think I liked the changes that were being made I liked the book that it was or the series that it was kind of before then and books 9 and 10 were a little bit rough for me it took me like a month to read this book just because I wasn't all that interested I gave it three stars it was still fine like I still like the writing style and I like the characters it's it's a really fun series and if you like urban fantasy I would highly recommend but I did like the first I think eight books a lot better and then books 9 and 10 were just kind of like this has gone in a direction that does not appeal to me as much so it was a little bit of a disappointing way to end the series but I still think overall the series was really fantastic really fun I had a great time I love the characters I love the relationships it has some flaws but it was just like a really really fun time and I enjoyed the whole thing and then I listened to Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present by Harriet Washington. This is a nonfiction book that is about exactly that. It's just the history of essentially racism in medicine, like going back to the 1600s and just like the whole history and like experiments that have been done on black people, specifically Americans. And like it's it discusses slavery times and the experiments that were done on slaves and like what medical treatment of slaves was like and it then it just continues and goes to the 1700s 1800s up through modern day and it discusses how things have changed and how the view of the public has changed and like of course it talks about like the Tus Tuskegee syphilis experiment but like a lot of the book is about how it's not just that like it's you know the whole of medicine for hundreds of years and it discusses how things have changed and how things have improved and how things have improved now in America but now we need to discuss like what's going on in the rest of the world and specifically Africa and it was just so interesting and so well researched and like Harriet Washington knows a lot like she knows what she is talking about in this book I did not always know what she was talking about <laughs> because science is a struggle for me but it was just so so well done like she is very familiar with like medicine and medical treatments and like procedures and like how things work in medicine but she's also so familiar with the history and she's done so much research I gave this four stars it was fantastic it was a very lengthy difficult audiobook 
but I would highly recommend like it was just fantastically done. It's tough to get through both because it is just like so dense and like so much information about like medicine and science and history and like all of this combined and it's also just like absolutely horrifying because you're you're reading about all of these different terrible things that have been done to black people and like these traumatizing things and like people are killed people are tortured people are abused and it's just like absolutely horrific but also just so interesting and such necessary information like I could not recommend this book enough like it is just a fantastically well done book if you're at all interested in history and or medicine or both or like you're just trying to educate yourself 100% would recommend this it was fantastic it was one of the most worthwhile books I read this year I think I learned so much um but yeah it also was just like a lot to get through it was so much to get through and it was kind of unpleasant at points and I had to take breaks <laughs> it was a lot but an absolutely like wonderful fantastically well done book so highly highly recommend that one then I read I Am Najud, Age 10 and Divorced by Najud Ali and Delphine Minwe. This is a nonfiction book, a memoir of Najud Ali. She was a Yemeni girl who was married to, I believe, a 40 year old man or a 30 year old man when she was 10 years old and she was abused by him and ran away and ran to a courthouse and a judge and got a divorce. And this book is about her and basically her story and how it happened and how what this means for Yemen and like the other children there who are married underage and it was very interesting um I chose not to rate this because <laughs> while the book about horrifying topics it has a very hopeful ending it has an ending of she has escaped this abusive marriage she can now go back to school she can now learn things she wants to become a lawyer like the female lawyer who helped her and helped her get that divorce and she's going to protect her younger sister and she's going to change things in Yemen and the book is like the world is wide open for her now and then the book ends and I was like oh well this was published a few years ago let's google this girl um she was remarried at I, I believe 16 her younger sister was married at I think like 12 both of them dropped out of school neither of them became lawyers neither of them were able to finish their education they were both married off as children and it's just like the world continues to disappoint and be a terrible place and just uh, I felt like I lost my faith in humanity <laughs> a little bit I was just I was reading this and it was just like the worst thing I'd ever felt in my life I was just like I wish I didn't know this like and it's not because like I don't know that this happens because it's like I don't think any of this is really like new information except in like the details it was just like this little girl escaped and she had so much access to the world that most children in Yemen wouldn't she had so many resources and people who wanted to help her and people who had the money and the power to help her and like even with all of that they still couldn't and I just I felt so bad after reading this like this book just made me feel horrible it was like I know that you can't save everyone but like you can't save this one little girl like after everything else that she'd been and uh, it was a horrible experience but I would recommend this book I think it's a very worthwhile read um the writing is a little bit rough it was originally published in French which is why it's written with Delphine Minoui um, even though I don't believe Nijud speaks anything other than Arabic so you know it wasn't really written by her but I think they tried to capture her speech so it feels a little bit brief a little bit like simplified it was a good book it was very worthwhile just like absolutely be prepared to just like have your whole world just like devastated for a minute because I felt terrible um but but yes would would recommend picking this up and then I read Anna Karenina, which was my accomplishment for the month. Um, I gave this four stars. I don't know how to explain what happens in this book because everything happens in this book. Essentially, this is about Russian society in the 19th century. And it's all about very wealthy, privileged people in Russia and all of their dramatic problems. 
it's a very telling novella. Anna, of the title, is a 20-something woman who is married to a man 20 years older than her. She has a son with him and she falls in love with this other guy who is closer to her age and they have an affair. And that affair kind of just like goes on and on and she eventually leaves her husband and like the tragedy occurs. And in addition to being about that, it's also about everyone else that she interacts with and she's really kind of not the main character. And it's kind of just about like all these rich people in Russian society and like all of their problems and all of their relationships and like it's it's a good time. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, four stars. It's my kind of book. The only things I really struggled with, I love the characters. I loved, this is just a cast full of like truly unlikable people and like Levin who just like goes on and on about farming and like he can't make up his mind and he just philosophizes about everything and then he's like well maybe I'll just sleep on it and then he'll just go on and on and be like I'll think more on it tomorrow and it's funny and like you've got Anna who's just an absolute tragic heroine who just like completely ruins her own life as well as it being ruined by society and you have her fiance who's kind of a self-absorbed dude and then you've got like 20 other main characters there's a lot going on but it's a good time um and I loved all the interpersonal relationships and like I loved following all these people and like it's it's so interesting and it's so like complex and intricately done like all of the little details are so perfect I loved it um I did struggle a little with kind of how melodramatic it felt at times because sometimes it was like it felt real and it felt like these people were real and having real problems and other times it was just like this is a telenovela like Anna is on her deathbed and she is proclaiming her love for her estranged husband as she has just given birth to her like lover's child and I'm like why <laughs> like why can't this be like toned down ever so slightly and I wish it'd been like a little bit less and it felt just like a little bit more real because you know that's a lot more my thing but it was like really interesting um I also had some issues with like the women in this story and their role because at its core to me this felt like a moral story about womanhood and the role of women in society because Anna is the only female character with any agency who does anything outside of what women are supposed to do. They're supposed to stay at home and have children and like Anna doesn't seem very happy for the vast majority of this book and it did just kind of feel like it was immoral like this is what women are supposed to do and like women who don't do that are unhappy and that did kind of rub me the wrong way like it's a really intricate and like interesting story and like very complex but it did kind of feel like that was the core of it and I know that that's not how everyone reads this book but that was how I read it and I really couldn't like distance myself from that view because it really felt like that's what it was but it was very very interesting I really really enjoyed it definitely a worthwhile read if you like just kind of like character dramas because that's all it was was just all these rich people having their dramas and like delving into all their like relationships and it was it was very very interesting and then the final book that I read in December at the very last day of the year I sat down and read this whole book for my 12 book project was Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb my power just flickered I apologize <laughs> I hope that doesn't continue this is the first book in the Farseer trilogy which is her first series in the realm of the elderlings this is a fantasy series about a young boy who's the illegitimate child of royalty and he essentially gets trained to be an assassin, hence the title. And it's all about him growing up in court, growing up in this kind of odd role of like almost royalty but not royalty, like very connected to the family but like also kind of shunned. And it's interesting, it's really really well written, I gave it four stars. It's the writing style just flows so easy and so smoothly and like it reminded me of like Lisa Gardner where I just like devour her books because they're so easy to read and so enjoyable and it was just like fantastically done. I love the characters, I loved kind of the magic system. I do hope that in the next book like, more gets explored like both with the magic and with the politics because that was one of my biggest issues was that it just felt like 
those things were underdeveloped and I just wanted more from them because they were so interesting and I, I do hope that like later on in the series we get more from that. I also thought that this was like a little bit generic fantasy it's just like that kind of like when you think of like that general like medieval fantasy stuff like this is kind of what I imagine like exactly and like there are interesting elements to it like I really enjoyed it it's a four star read but like it, I was sitting here feeling like I have read all these tropes before I have read like this kind of general story before like it doesn't feel like she's doing anything that's all that interesting like I don't even read that much fantasy but I, I do also wonder how much of that is because this is like a 30 year old book and I'm reading this you know 30 years later so it's like maybe it's just like kind of the silence of the lambs thing where like everything else has just ripped it off so much that I'm like kind of blaming the original but I don't know it's a fun story it's a really fun time it's a really easy read it's fun fantasy I'm really looking forward to continuing on with the rest of the trilogy and probably the rest of the realm of the elderlings it's a wonderful book I, I definitely understand why everyone seems to love Robin Hobb so much because it's just really good it's one of those books that's just like good in kind of every way and I'm looking forward to seeing what else she does in this world so that was everything that I read in December. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them if you have. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.